people are always asking me to review my boat, so here you go. So the story of how I came to this boat is I built a P-Row because I got tired of fishing off the bank, which is a, basically a wooden swamp canoe, and that got old really fast because I got tired of paddling. At first was got an electric trolling motor, not enough battery power, uh, that led to oars with the trolling motor, still was, just didn't have the athletic ability, which led to eventually getting this motor that you guys see me fishing with all the time, and that has led to the current rig. Okay, so my boat is an Alumacraft 1236. That means it's 12 feet long, 36 feet wide. The height is about 15 inches as per most John boats. The boat is limited to three persons or 355 pounds, whichever one is greater. Limited to 10 horsepower and or 510 pounds of total weight. It takes about 10 horsepower to plane per 500 pounds. So that's right at about the limit. So if you put a 10 horse motor on this thing, it's just enough to get it on a plane. Whereas the 6.5 mud motor, it's just not quite enough power. It just sort of it, half planes, it sort of just plows through the water more than anything, but it'll get you where you want to go. And for a single person boat, 510 pounds is plenty of capacity. But if you're wanting to take people with you, I definitely get something a lot bigger. As far as the underside, it's held up pretty well. And I, they build these boats as tanks, man. I just run these things across the rocks all the time, especially coming into the boat docks. As you can see, there's lots of scratches on it, but there's no leaks in it still. People think that the that it's too thin, but no, it isn't. It actually holds up very, very well on the rocks. Now, right here, I dented that on a rock head full of steam on my trolling motor, and bam, just wasn't looking where I was going because I oftentimes was sitting backwards and rowing and stuff. And But let that you know, that's where that came in. One criticism I have for this is this is not an easy way to mount a trolling motor to the front. I believe what they really should do with these sorts of motors is sort of replicate the back transom onto the front so it just has a ready-made trolling motor mount right there without having to you know drill holes in your boat i think that's ridiculous i think in a boat like this the transom on the front all the way across another criticism the boat did not come with oar locks i don't know why they wouldn't do that human powered propulsion and they don't include it so i had to go buy oar locks drill holes in my boat which is what i hate okay so the number one thing they got right was this transom perfect uh, you got, they have this plate here with the wood here. That's great. Remember the old transoms, you just had to beef this up with wood on your own, but they've actually included it here, and that works actually quite nicely. And uh, as you see, my motor, the, the little bolts here, don't. you can either put them here or here, but they're my motor, the bolts are designed to go in the back there. And this motor is a Thailand long tail outboard motor designed to be long because that propeller is designed to run in the wake of the boat, in the crest of the wake of the boat. If you shorten it up, you'll be plowing the, the, the bow of the boat into the water. You see how incredibly parallel that shaft is with the boat right now? That's exactly what you want. The long shaft is what keeps the motor as close to parallel as possible but it also means you can run in some very, very shallow water. The brand is Swamp Runner or, you know, SPS or SPS North America. Mr. John Dobbs down in Florida makes these. He was a long time uh, wilderness wildlife officer and he and his wife have imported these things for years and years and they've refined and tweaked this product. And it is a simple, rugged, almost AK-47 of outboard motors. See, most people don't know, it comes as a kit. You put it together yourself. It comes with the shaft, the propeller, it comes with the, uh, the mounts, uh, the transom mounts, the motor mounts and all that, the couplings, the power coupling, the coupling shaft, the grease inputs and all that. And that's all you get. And it comes with the cable, power cable, throttle, handle and all that. <clears throat> you have to supply the power head on your own. The power head is nothing more than a go-kart engine. Same types of engines you see on mini bikes, go-karts, power generators, log splitters, those sorts of things. Now, this is a 6.5 horsepower engine. For this particular model, they make them for three horsepower engines all the way up to 23 horsepower engines. The reason I chose the 6.5 is because it was lightweight, light enough for someone like a bad back like me that I can just manhandle it and lift it up and mount it myself. 
and there were a there was an abundance of go-kart parts for it so that I can actually modify the engine just like you would a 350 small block uh, in your you know 55 Chevy or something and I've built an engine before blown up an engine before replaced it this is the second power head on it uh, if you run them bone stock they'll last forever if you modify them I'd recommend you go with something that has a very durable casing the casing on the last motor was weak the casing on this one is pretty stout and if I build a new engine I'd, uh, I highly recommend that you buy a separate power head to build and have one power head that stays bone stock at all times purely for the sake of reliability and then you build something and whatever motor you buy don't plan on running it past 5,000 rpm you just don't need tons of rpm with an engine like this concentrate on 5,000 rpm get that torque down and you can have a nice ride i just won't use anything else i'm sorry i haven't seen a better deal than there is in this and so oh, you must be a sponsor or something or whatever get no i'm not i bought my motor just like everyone else buys theirs. Now, Mr. Dobb did give me a coupon that I used to buy some, I redeemed for tools, some extra tools for the unit, and some extra propellers and things like that, and that was a couple years ago. I, I made a put-together video for it, and uh, but I, I just won't use anything else. This is all I run now. The number one criticism I have about this boat design and this motor design is that they're really not compatible. This is an American designed boat designed for traditional outboard these thailand outboards if those guys mount these motors inboard right you, you have a lot of weight hanging off the rear of the motor it's not a safety thing at all i mean they're very safe motors this is a very robust plate here but you can tell the motor would be a lot better if it were mounted right here over this support strut these motors like a long narrow boat this is a short stubby boat it's 36 inches wide on the bottom which is, uh, you know, that's fine for this motor, but it takes more horsepower to get up on a plane. If you narrow it down and make it longer, so instead of a 12 foot 36 inch boat, if you had a 16 foot 32 inch boat, you'd be able to get up on a plane with less power. This trailer is a Harbor Freight boat trailer. I love it. Yeah, a lot of people love them. It used to be that people would buy a regular utility trailer and then just add some bunks and convert it to a uh, boat trailer or a kayak or canoe trailer but then I think Harbor Freight figured out wait a minute if we just sell the boat trailer people will just buy that outright some people hate these trailers they, they, they bash on them I think it's mostly because they're angry because it's made in Taiwan they hate the fact that there's another country in the world that can do something better than we can quite frankly I remember when I had a boat trailer a cheap one that I bought an American made boat trailer it was all rusted out. It was old, and I went to a boat. I went to a local boat dealer to see if he could help me put some new bunks. So he didn't want to do business with me. I won't mention that person or that company's name here in town. But uh, yeah, quite frankly, he didn't want my business, and I uh, just kind of felt put off. And so many local companies. Everybody talks about local companies, local companies, and then when you go there, they treat you like junk, and then you wonder why you want to go to China. Quite frankly, China treats me better. So. You know, if you want my business, treat me like you want my business, and then I'll give you my business. I like this trailer. It's held up well. It's time for some maintenance. I had to put these bunks on. I wish they would have shipped it with better bunks and things. I bought these bunks separately, as you've seen in my other video. And um, uh, it's time to take these things. Uh, it's, what, uh, it's time to do annual maintenance on it. I need to take everything off. I need to straighten everything up because these bunks are all tilted sideways. And I need to rethink that and make that and pull it all the way out to the side here and just have this thing coming up way up here so you have a little bit of side protection. You see you have the extra hole here and here. Uh, I could put a piece of two by four there and bolt it there so that these won't tilt out anymore. It's time that's gotten loose here and this has moved some so that that needs to be tightened up and moved up so you just need to take that. It did not come with a winch. It, did, it does not come with a spare tire or a jack. It's a very basic cheap trailer that allow you to build it the way you want. Think about those things. It does come with the lights. It does come with the wiring. It does come with the safety chains and the tongue and all that kind of things. Keep in mind that the tires on this trailer are just rated for very slow speeds, like 40, 40 miles an hour or something like that. I have taken them up to highway speeds with no problem. Uh, but just keep in mind that they, you, you may, if you want to, you could upgrade those tires to like 12 inch tires and, and be 
done with it. The trailer tongue is pretty thin. That's a, it, that, that's the flimsiest part. It have not had any problems until I flipped the trailer. Once I flipped the trailer, it's sort of twisted and it's off angled, but it's still on there. Uh, so that needs to be replaced uh, at some point, and that's gonna be a, even though the trailer flipped, it never came off the ball. And if I wanted it to give, I'd rather for that tongue to give than for this to get all twisted and mangled. And that's probably why they did it that way. The anchor chains, that's why you have the anchor chains on there, and that's a good thing. So if you put all the weight to the back of the boat, you can pick it up, and it's pretty well balanced. So again, I have loved this boat. I have enjoyed this boat. It's been good for me. I think this trailer could hold a longer boat. It's just a 12-foot boat, but it can hold, the book says it can hold up to 14 feet long. I think with some manipulation, extending the bunks, things like that, I could probably get up to a 15, maybe even a 16 foot boat. I built this thing up over the course of several years. I, I got the boat first, the hull first, then I got the trailer, then I got the motor. That, my friends, is a review of my boat. If you have any other questions, just email me, damon at blackwarriorlures.com or just ask questions away down here in the comments. I will talk to you guys later. See you.